Most cancers arise because there is some sort of error in the genetic material, um, which usually happens just by fluke. However, some cancers arise because of inherited errors that predispose to cancer development. So cancer, in essence, is a genetic disease, typically, but the, the question that we try to deal with in the Cancer Genetics Clinic is whether or not those genetic changes were there from the time a person was born or if they were acquired over a person's lifetime. Generally speaking, inherited cancers happen when a person has a mutation in a gene that's present in all of the cells of their body that increases risk for certain types of cancers to happen. There are a number of cancers that are associated with hereditary risk. A lot of these tend to be common cancers, like breast cancer and colon cancer, which in some cases are associated with hereditary predisposition. Even though this is a minority of breast cancers and colon cancers, it's still very important to identify individuals with a strong family history of cancer. So genetic makeup and skin cancer is a little bit of a tricky question only because um, there are sort of two issues that we can think about there. One of which is we know that there are genetic factors that are related to physical characteristics that can increase a person's risk for skin cancer. So basically people who look like me, people who have light or red hair, people who are fair skinned and freckled, people who have light eyes, those things can run in families and those genes don't necessarily aren't necessarily cancer genes, but those are genes that run in families that cause the physical characteristics that are related to higher risk. And then separately, there are some genes that don't have anything to do with physical characteristics, but that can influence a person's risk for skin cancers. In particular, um, in hereditary melanoma, that can be caused by mutations in a gene called P16, or CDKN2A is the other name for that gene. And when a person has a mutation in that gene, those patients have an increased risk for developing melanomas, including more than one melanoma over time. And we can also see melanoma in their families. So both of those factors come into play. Well, research in genetics has come a long way in the past few years. There have been a number of innovations in techniques to, to, to sequence DNA and Basically, we know a whole lot more now than we did even 10 or 15 years ago. One of the important ways in which research plays in to knowing about skin cancers is that by looking at large numbers of individuals with skin cancers, we can try to identify associations between particular gene changes and, and cancer risks. Everybody that we see in the Cancer Genetics Clinic is invited to participate in our Cancer Genetics Registry, which has been around since 2002. And the goal of that registry is to collect information and blood samples for DNA so that we can better understand genetic risk factors in families, um, and maybe learn new things to better understand how to take care of patients who have inherited conditions that increase the risk for cancer. So at the University of Michigan Comprehensive Cancer Center, patients are seen for genetic evaluations in a variety of settings. We have two designated clinics, uh, the Cancer Genetics Clinic and the Hereditary Breast Ovarian Cancer Risk Asa Evaluation Clinic where patients meet specifically with our genetic counselors as well as our cancer genetics uh, physicians. However, patients in a number of other clinics uh, will encounter our genetic counselors. Patients who are seen in the multidisciplinary pancreas clinic, in the multidisciplinary endocrine oncology clinic, and in the multidisciplinary uh, skin cancer and melanoma clinic are often see seen by our genetic counselors because they have been identified as potentially at risk for genetic conditions. Many patients that come to see us in the Cancer Genetics Clinic are concerned about what is my risk for developing cancer. I'm worried because my mom has had it, my sister has had it, my father has had it, and I want to know, is my risk higher and what can I do about that? And so part of our job is to work with the patient to look at the family history, to figure out is there a genetic test that makes sense that would be likely to provide us information, to get the patient through that process, help them understand how the test works, help them understand the test result and what it means, and then help them come up with a plan that they can either work with their physicians here or outside to make sure that they are taking all of the steps that they can to reduce their risks.